we've looked at constructing new functions by applying arithmetic operations to combine two functions, but we can also construct what are referred to as composite functions. So given two functions, f and g, we can define the composite function f of g of x, or I'm sorry, f open circle g, as the expression f open circle g of x is equal to our function f of x evaluated at that second function g of x. So whenever we use this open circle notation between two functions, it means we're creating this composition of these two functions, where we take that second function that's listed and essentially plug that into the first function and simplify that result. In example four then, what we wanna do is start off by first finding f of g meaning essentially what we want to do is take our function f and evaluate it at 4x, since that's our function g of x. This would give us 7 times that quantity 4x plus 8, or 28x plus 8. So really nothing different is happening here than hasn't happened with previous uh, problems where we've evaluated functions. Now we're simply evaluating our function at a specific function value or a specific function statement versus at a specific number. We can also look at evaluating g of f, which means we want to take our function g of x and evaluate it at our function f of x, which is 7x plus 8. Again here we'll take that function g and everywhere we have an x we'll plug in that expression for f of x and then simplify or distribute in this case bringing us to 28x plus 32. Something important to note here is that we first evaluated f of g and then g of f, and these two expressions were not equal to each other, meaning the order of our composition matters. There are cases where these two statements could be equal to one another, but in many cases they'll be different, so we need to be sure we're paying attention to which function gets plugged into which function. We can also look at taking a function composed with itself. For instance, f of f would be our function f of x, evaluated at itself, which is 7x plus 8. This means that we'll take our given function f and everywhere we have an x, substitute in that function 7x plus 8. Distributing through here will give us 49x plus 56 plus 8, or 49x plus 64. Similarly, in part d, we can take our function g of x and construct its composition with g of x with itself. So we would be taking that function g and evaluating it at 4x to get 4 times the quantity 4x, or 16x. In example 5, we have more or less the same question, but with two new functions, x squared and x squared plus 1. Evaluating h of k would mean we want to take our function h and evaluate it at x squared plus 1. So we'll take the quantity x squared plus 1 and substitute that into our function h of x everywhere we have an x, meaning we're going to be taking x squared plus 1 times itself, or x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1 which will give us x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. 
evaluating k of h will mean we want to take our function k and evaluate it at x squared. So we'll start off by taking that quantity x squared squared plus 1 to get x to the fourth plus 1. Again, note here that h of k was not equal to k of h, so that order matters. We can look at taking these functions composed with themselves. So we could take h evaluated at x squared, which would be x squared squared or x to the fourth power. And we can take k of k to take our function k and evaluate it at x squared plus 1. So again, creating that, the composition of that function with itself will give us x squared plus 1 squared plus 1, which will end up simplifying to x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 2, once we expand and combine any like terms. In each of these examples, we haven't made a point of stating this as we went along, but in example 4, a through d, our domain is negative infinity to infinity, or all real numbers. And all of our examples, uh, in, or all of our problems in example 5, will have that same domain of negative infinity to infinity. When we look at example 6, we'll see how we determine that.